Welcome to Restoring Full Backups. When you're restoring a database from the full backup, it returns the database to the exact state that it was in when the backup was completed. Now, it's not when the backup was started, which a lot of people think it is. It's actually when the backup is completed. And the reason for that is that during the backup process, once the full backup finishes copying the actual data from the database, it will then copy all the transactions from the transaction log into the full backup as well. So when the full backup is restored, the restore is completed as of when the backup was completed, which includes all the transactions that were in the transaction log. If the database currently exists, the first thing the SQL Server is going to do is basically drop the database. A lot of times when people are just getting started with backup and restore, when they're going to restore a database, what they'll do is they'll create an empty database and then try to restore into that database. They're just simply giving the restore window within Management Studio an easy way to show the database name in the drop-down menu. SQL Server is actually going to delete that database as part of the backup and restore process. The syntax to restore a database is fairly easy. Of the commands shown here on the screen, realistically, all you really need is those first two lines shown in that first bullet point. Restore database, the name of your database, from disk equals to, and then the file that the backup is stored in. The with statement and everything past that is totally optional. So in this case, the sample is showing us that we're going to move a file name from one location to another, we're going to replace the existing database, and we're going to output the status every 10 seconds. There's a lot of other optional parameters that you can specify as well, such as keep replication, no recovery, recovery, or standby. If it's a partial restore, if it should be restricted user after the restore is completed, or if we want to keep CDC, which would be change data tracking. Now, by default, if we don't specify recovery, no recovery, or standby, recovery is going to be the option specified. So if all we need to do is restore our full backup, we don't need to specify any sort of recovery option. If we need to restore transaction log backups or differential backups, then we would need to specify the no recovery option so that we could restore additional database backups. So let's go ahead and take a look at restoring an actual database backup. So here we have the restore syntax on the screen already. In this case, I'm restoring the AdventureWorks 2012 database from a backup that I took just now. That backup is stored in C colon backslash backup backslash aw.back. I've specified the with replace and the stats equals 10 options. I'm using with replace because the database already exists. I'm using the stats equals 10 so it can output the status of the backup every 10%. So when I go ahead and execute this backup and switch to the messages tab, we'll see that the percent processed is going to simply be outputted there for me. Now it's going to take a minute for this to complete because there's a lot of transactions sitting in the transaction log that need to be rolled forward and backward as part of this backup and restore process. Last time I ran this restore, it took about a minute and a half to run. So we'll go ahead and let this complete. Once the restore operation is complete, you'll see a lot of useful information being outputted here. Specifically, it tells you how many pages have been restored for each of the database files. So in this case, we've got 24,864 pages in the main AdventureWorks 2012 underscore data file. We've got 16 pages in the sample group file. We've got three pages in the transaction log. So this entire operation took 88.046 seconds, processing 2.207 megabytes per second. So as you've seen, the restore command is fairly simple to use and fairly easy to use. Now, if I tried to run the same command without the replace syntax, it would actually give me an error message because the database already exists and the transaction log has not been backed up. So in summary, the full restore simply restores the database back to the state it was when the backup was completed.